Chair, Steve Costello uh, is absent this afternoon. Uh, so as Vice Chair, I'm going to oversee the meeting agenda today. Uh, welcome and thank you for giving up your afternoon time uh, for this. And this is the Local Comprehensive Planning Committee's pre-visioning workshop. So I'm going to call the meeting to order. And since we're remote, I need to take a roll call. And I'm going to go down the list, even though I know a lot of people aren't here yet. Um, Felicia Penn, I'm here. Carlos Barbosa. Amanda Converse. Lindsay Council. Unmute, please. Here. Thank you. Mark Hansen. Megan Mort. Wendy Northcross. Here. Francis Parks. Cheryl Powell. I'm here. Avery Revere. Here. Susan Rohrbach. Robert Twist. And Jennifer Williams. Unmute. Tell us you're here, Jennifer. Here, thank you. Thank you. All right, so I have to read the uh, notice of recording, the official duty here. Uh, this meeting is being recorded, broadcast on Channel 18 in accordance with Massachusetts General Chapter, General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. The committee must inquire whether anyone is taping this meeting and to please make their presence known. Anybody else taping this meeting? Seeing none. I'm going to call on Kate Maldonado, who's going to introduce the consultants and go through our topics for discussion, et cetera, et cetera. So, Kate. Thank you, Felicia. Good afternoon, committee members. Uh, we really appreciate you carving out time of your day, especially during the afternoon, to meet with us. So on the town side, it's myself, Kate Maldonado, Jim Cuffer, as well as Kyle Pedicini. With us, we also have two of our consultant teams. Um, from Barrett Planning Group, we have Jill Salankas, Harley Vendetti, as well as Alexis Lanzalota. And then I'd also like to formally introduce the team, the committee to Dodson and Flinker. We have Dylan Sussman and Peter Flinker, and they will be um, orchestrating this meeting. The items that we will discuss today will include, we'll review the agenda, the outline for our Bringing It Together workshops. We'll have the two workshops next week, so next Tuesday, We'll have a virtual session that'll be starting at noon. And then next Wednesday, that'll be the in-person session between 5 to 7 p.m. at the community center. Pizza will be provided as well as child care. So we certainly appreciate your help to push the word on these two workshops. You've received the flyer. And today, the first item, we'll be going through the agenda to make sure that we are collectively on the same page. Any questions, comments as to the outline of the agenda? Then we will, uh, the Town of Barnesville staff will provide an update on key themes that we saw over the last five months for public comment received to date. We'll turn it over to Barrett Planning Group, who will present on some key trends and highlights for existing conditions. And then lastly, we'll look at our 2010 vision and start to think about what our vision for the updated local comprehensive plan uh, will be. So at this point, I'll hand it over to Dylan. Thanks. Um, I just want to introduce two other people. So Jack Sweeney Taylor from our firm Dotson and Flinker is here, and also just Jeff Davis um, from Horsley Witten Group. Um, Alexis, you want to start screen sharing? So this is um, the presentation is basically a you know, a, a preview of what people will see during the workshop. Um, so we're going to go through it in pieces and stop for um, opportunities for you to give feedback as we go. Um, these first couple of slides obviously will not be in this format for the um, workshop. So as, as Kate said, there are two visioning workshops next week, February 28th and March 1st. The first is virtual and the second is in person. The format for the two is basically the same, except there's one or two extra act activities in the in-person meeting um, where we summarize input and try and bring it to a greater level of synthesis. 
Uh, the objectives of the visioning workshop are to identify Barnstable's shared community values to drive future decisions related to growth, development, and resource protection. That language is fairly specific because it relates to the Cape Cod Commission's um, local guidance for comprehensive plans. Um, they, they ask that the vision does those things. Um, to identify key elements of a consensus-based vision statement for Barnstable, provide a meaningful and memorable event for participants, and to mark a milestone in the comprehensive plan process. Next slide, please. Um, so this is the agenda for the workshop. There's gonna be a brief welcome by a local person, um, then the presentations that you're gonna to see today. Um, and in about 25, 26 minutes, hopefully we're gonna break out into groups. Um, and the first, there are basically two discussion topics. Um, the first is to get input on the summary of community input that um, you'll hear today. Um, and the and specifically to try and identify which, what the community priorities are and, and what the values that underlie those priorities are. Um, and then we're gonna talk about the vision. We're gonna start from the 2010 vision, ask people whether it sounds generally light, right, it's inspiring, and then talk about what's changed um, in the town, what might change in the town in the future, and therefore how the vision might need to be modified for your next iteration of your comprehensive plan. Um, the virtual meeting will end at that point after about um, an hour and a half, and the in-person meeting will continue on with a report out. And then um, during the report out, we're gonna try to capture the, the key ideas on um, pieces of paper, and then basically use that to synthesize ideas, um, group them together. And then after we do that, people will be able to do a dotting exercise where they basically prioritize key values, key vision elements, um, and then we'll have a full group discussion of, of what they see as the patterns and the dots and also what they heard in their groups. And then we'll wrap up. Um, are there any questions about the agenda for the workshop? Um, if anybody has a question, please uh, use the, in the reactions, use the raise hand and then we'll know how to call on you. Uh, Cheryl. Yes, just a clarification. I'm pretty sure I'm right. Uh, but so basically the uh, the agenda here that's laid out by the minutes is for not only today's meeting, but then the in-person meeting that comes next week. Is that correct? Yeah, today's meeting is a little bit different, um, but very similar. We'll probably spend a little bit more time you know, discussing what you see in the in the PowerPoints, which is going to take a little bit of time away from the the vision portion but this agenda is really for the workshops itself okay thank you very much for clear it's just i since it's during the work day i, I was able to clear it up till 3 30 but i have another patient at 3 30. yeah <laughs> thank you for yeah. clarifying i because i want to be very much to be a part of this and understand it thank you okay and and dylan just to clarify too to cheryl's question so this agenda is actually for the two workshops next week we have the zoom which as dylan mentioned right there i think there's a one line in there at that 86 minute mark where this section is only for in person so that that earlier zoom you won't get the full experience you'll get a lot of it but you won't get the full um you know was it uh two hour or so um meeting uh, where you have some in-person exercises as well. Thank you for that clarification. It's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure I was understanding. Yeah, that's kind of, um, I just want to say, um, don't they have a little funny software stuff where you could still get people to vote on things if they're on the, on the Zoom interaction thing so they get some benefits of interaction but not entirely the same kind that they that you can do in person with dots uh, could we look into that incorporating that or are we just thinking that it's just going to take too much time and it's not worth it on a virtual presentation yeah we did consider that and i think came to the conclusion that it would take time away from conversation which is probably more meaningful um, okay. Because in in or basically because in order to do that, we'd need to be able to get to the point of synthesizing the information, which requires a report out, to then enter it into the Zoom poll, 
Um, so, and then doing the Zoom poll ends up taking a fair amount of time, longer than you would like. Okay, as long as it's been discussed. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions at this time? Hearing none, who's next? That'll be me. Yep. I'll take it from here. Uh, Alexa, if you wouldn't mind forwarding along. So as part of the agenda that Dylan mentioned, um, you know, we'll, we'll go into great detail about uh, what we've achieved over the past five to six months um, in terms of this committee and staff going, you know, crisscrossing through the villages and, and hearing from from everyone. So we can we'll go over. Uh, some high level detail, but then actually our consultants have done a great job of, of getting into what has been brought back and start to identify some key themes. So Alexis, if you wouldn't mind the next slide. So as you guys already Jim, know. Before, oh. hey, Jim, Jim, before you get going, I see that somebody named Ellen has a hand up and I'm sorry, but I didn't want to get too far away from our previous um, place if the question was relevant there. I'm sorry to interrupt. Ellen? Maybe not. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Thank you. not a problem at Sorry all. Please, no, anytime, please, uh, please let me know. Um, so our community engagement over the past five, six months, it's been uh, a lot of different locations looking to, to reach as many people as possible. This is actually not even the full list. We have uh, uh, a number of activities that you know we've we've been we were asked to come to based on some of these meetings, and we've uh, reached out to, to many more. Uh, so next slide. So with that, uh, in addition to going out to people, we reached out to uh, our community through the survey. Um, and uh, at that, the last uh, iteration where uh, the, the committee thought to send to each homeowner um, or each resident of, of the community got a, our final bump. Uh, that got us all the way up to over 1,500 responses, uh, which is great to see. And I think you'll see when uh, when you start sifting through uh, the, the full package of community outreach that, that the committee has been provided and uh, the survey response summaries that we'll be providing you, you'll see a lot of overlap, which is which is interesting to see. Uh, you know, a lot of things such as uh, our coastal resources, water quality, uh, seem to stand out, uh, walkability, uh, safety, et cetera. Next slide. So the survey, so the first slide was uh, strengths, weaknesses, threats. This one you'll you'll have in your, your uh, package will be a survey summary, again, going through kind of the the hot, the importance uh, that uh, that individuals have identified um, through the survey results. Um, really, what I took away from a lot of this is we have a lot of commonalities in in priorities, um, as well as we want to get stuff done. Uh, you know, things like uh, community engagement were towards the bottom, whereas please improve my my water quality and roads uh, were towards the top. Uh, next slide. So the the key themes throughout all of this over the past five months, reaching out to everyone. Boiling the, I think it's 95 pages of our community outreach um, document into a handful of bullets. Uh, we look to get the, the, the most common, uh, consistent uh, threads that we've heard from our, our residents, our business owners uh, throughout, the, throughout this past uh, few months. So um, I'll go through each of these just one by one. Uh, if there's any kind of clarity needed, please don't hesitate to, to cut me off or uh, we can certainly leave time for questions afterwards. But one of the the, net, the number one things that we heard throughout the entire community, whether it's you know West Barnesville or Katuwit or wherever, uh, concerns regarding our and protecting our water quality in all forms, harbors, rivers, ponds, and drinking water. So this was consistent throughout now each village had a little different spin on it. You know, West Barnstable is is 
is very much concerned about you know things like drinking water, as they're all wells. Whereas uh, Katuwich, you heard loud and clear that their harbors, uh, the quality of their harbors, are of a, a, a major concern for them. Next, we have diversity of community character that is unique in each village to be preserved. And also add the next bullet, preserve historic structures, features, and ways that provide Cape Cod charm. I think both of these uh, you'll see, and again, each of these villages has a little bit different um, um, thought to uh, these bullets, but uh, each came out as we love, we, we're in our village for a reason, reason. We, we really enjoy the uniqueness and we wish to preserve that where we can. Uh, the next two bullets relate to uh, really what I took away was was uh, families. Uh, we need more housing options and opportunities for affordable price for all ages and more opportunities for children's recreation, village events, general family services, such as medical access, specialized education, et cetera. So these two items, you know, we, we, we speak of wanting, um, you know, to be a year round community of families, but there are, there are limited housing options at this time, uh, limited affordable options at this time. And even if you did find that option, there are uh, limited um, opportunities, at least from what we've heard, for things like recreation, things like medical services, despite the fact that we have uh, you know, a hospital here and uh, a number of other medical uh, services, uh, we have a bit of a strain on, uh, on being able to find things, just general services like PCPs and, and, and the like. Um, from there, desire for more opportunities to form community connections and get to know neighbors. Thought this was a fascinating one, hearing from all of our uh, villages. Uh, this kept coming into conversation about, you know, the, the there used to be an opportunity to really form bonds and get to know our neighbors, and that seems to be uh, missing uh, over the over the years. And whether that's due to more recent, you know, activities such as COVID and the like, but uh, you know, this is again just something that just kept coming up that we felt it needed to be addressed here uh, for the committee's consideration. Uh, from there, need to protect our environmental resources. Barnesville maintains, including open space beaches, lakes, ponds, habitats, trails, vistas, et cetera. I think that was something we probably all knew was going to be a, uh, a theme that came out of this. That's something that that we we throughout Cape Cod uh, hold dear, and and I think um, was was certainly something that was going to be a priority, and and it's reflected in both the community engagement and the survey responses. Um, protect and enhance tourist, tourist appeals such as the Cape Cod, Cape Cod Field, beaches, open space, et cetera. Preserve the, and enhance the tree canopy throughout town, especially in Hyannis. That was one thing that we, we heard, not, not just in Hyannis, actually, but many other villages who come to visit Hyannis. There was quite a bit of, uh, of talk about, you know, being able to improve the landscape, the the tree canopy, the just anything to soften uh, the 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 streetscape of that general area. Um, it is our commercial hub, and you know that's one theme that we you know we we knew we were going to run into as well as um, that we none of us really reside in just one village yes you you may you may fall asleep and wake up in the same village but you're crisscrossing these imaginary lines uh each and every day to work uh, to shop to play um general concern over traffic speeding concerns and pedestrian safety so a lot a lot of as you probably expect uh um, concerns over just general uh traffic throughout the cape uh, we have Maybe we were far enough away from peak uh, season that it wasn't uh, um, something that was dominating the conversation, but uh, certainly um, general concerns over traffic um, and speeding concerns, a lot of it relating to pedestrian safety and wanting to feel comfortable and safe, uh, you know, walking through their village center, crossing their streets in their neighborhoods, but uh, several uh, statements of concerns of, you know, it just doesn't feel safe these days because of uh, which tend to be speeding concerns that were brought up. 
Uh, next, create more year-round employment opportunities, especially in the blue economy and job sectors that provide living wa wages. So we talk about our uh, supporting our seasonal employment, but also one trend that kept coming out was we do also need to think about how we can uh, pull in uh, and create uh, more year-round uh, opportunities for employment that pay, uh, you know, a, a good wage and and make living here uh, affordable. Um, improve safety in the village centers and supportive health services for those in need. Uh, that's certainly something that we heard um, from folks and and also from our you know um, our police and fire. Uh, talking about supportive health services that they see that on a daily basis and, and the need to do something to address that. And then lastly, for our key themes of engagement, uh, desire for more proactive communication transparency from town government. While this isn't a land use uh, topic, it was something that was a, con a constant uh, conversation that we had throughout our engagement. And so we thought it was it was uh, desirable to include and maybe consider as we were moving forward into uh, phase two and how we can uh, address uh, that in a, in a better a better way. Uh, so that's that's a lot. Obviously, you've had um, you know uh, the 95 pages of of uh, community engagement to date, uh, but this is we try to synthesize this as best as possible um, to give you some general themes, and we'll get into more of this again uh, next week at our full our full session. But we wanted to give you guys a sneak peek and and address any questions you may have with these. Thank thank you, Jim. Questions, comments from committee members? A lot of information here. Any surprises? Avery? Um, when I read these, I can't help but look at the uh, documents Kyle handed out last meeting that talk about the demographics who of who responded to the survey, because I, I definitely feel like these reflect the demographics in some way. Um, I, you know, as to what Carlos was talking about at the end of last meeting, I, I don't, I don't feel like all, uh, voices are all the voices in the town are really being heard. Um, you know, there's, I, I understand the LC P is a lot about land use and preservation, but it's also about people. And I just I just feel like it's absent from this in a certain way. It's it it reflects the people, you know, their education and whatever who responded to the survey. That's my two cents. Thank you. Uh, Wendy. Thanks. And I'm sorry, my camera's glitchy. I won't subject you to that. Um, my question is, well, aside from, from asking that Cape Cod be capitalized in the second bullet on the right-hand side, um, my question is the blue economy reference, and was that your interpretation at the staff level, or did people actually use the term blue economy? Um, my follow-up to that is, do, we, do you all have a copy of the blue economy vision plan that I can send the links to? if that helps people. Great, thank you, Wendy. Yes, so um, yes, I believe actually, uh, maybe during our greater Hyannis chamber that we actually reference specifically blue economy, but nevertheless, I, in, in many discussions, uh, uh, there was discussion about improving and supporting um, our harbors and the, the economy that works around the harbor in terms of Hyannis Harbor. And also, I believe there was some conversation in Barnesville Village about supporting the harbor up uh, north there. Um, and But then also um, in terms of just job sectors overall, in terms of year-round um, employment, there was a lot of conversations uh, regarding that. Uh, and I believe we do have that plan, but just in case, Wendy, if you want to send it our way, just so make sure we have it in the file, we could certainly do that. Sure, I, I'd be happy to, to do that. I mean, I do think the blue economy is synonymous with 
year-round higher paying wages, <clears throat> but it's not just related to what happens in a harbor. It can also be the construction of wastewater or the development of wastewater treatment alternatives that we don't currently have, um, drinking water, you know, protections, a whole anything to do with water. So it's not just the harbors. And I think that that's a tremendous opportunity for the town. Having access to our waters is a big part of what will make the blue economy successful. So I just think that that's, um, it's good to hear. And I would be happy to, to send the link and make sure we just, you, you all just have that um, because it's pretty, uh, Pretty expansive. Thank you. Great, Wendy. Thank you. And and back to Avery, if I may, real quick. Uh, so I I, I certainly understand uh, your references to some uh, previous comments that we've had, and maybe uh, looking in ways to address some gaps. I think that's what we're looking at right now is is identifying uh, or reviewing our survey responses. And identifying if there are any gaps and how now now how do we get to those gaps? I will say in terms of what we were talking about last time in terms of mental health, maybe we can expand upon that um, um, in our, our bullet. Uh, we talk about improving safety and support of health services for those in need, maybe expanding upon that into greater detail from what we've heard to date. Uh, we certainly can can look to do that. Yeah, Jim, I thought it was just human services in general that would uh, be a good umbrella versus, it, you know, it includes health services, clearly. Um, Avery, more comments on that? Oh, yeah, I'm, st I'm still unmuted. Um, perhaps in terms of the, the, the visioning agenda that we just put up, maybe there's a way, I have to believe, especially in the one that's live at, it's at the uh, recreation center, um, that will we will be attracting um, perhaps a, a wider demographic, and when, wouldn't that wouldn't it be a really nice opportunity to make sure that the questions that we're asking maybe tickle um, tickle that part of it? Oh no, lower my hand. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is you you actually want to make a concerted effort to target uh, responses in that category uh, to see what happens versus just passively finding out if they come out on their own. I think it's, I think it's worthwhile. I really do. I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm hoping, or I'm believing that maybe the whole part of this, this event that's happening next week is to reach like younger families and people that probably didn't show up at community village meetings and stuff like that. So Okay, Ellen, uh, you're not on a on the committee, so I'm just going to wait until all committee members have chimed in on this. I assume you're a member of the public, and um, we'll make an exception for you to speak after committee members are done with this discussion. Okay, um, Cheryl. Yes, uh, thank you. Make sure I'm unmuted. I just wanted to do a request. I know I'm following what everybody's saying. But we have the slides up, and then we only have the the person that is actually speaking at the time who actually comes up. Uh, is it possible? I know in the beginning we had all the participants up, so we can get. Oh, thank you so much. I just find that's helpful to see what reactions are, and you know, and to to get the whole group thing on where it's going. Thank sure, you. So I can put them back. Thank you. Uh, Dylan? I'm gonna mute myself. Um, I just had a, a follow-up question for Avery. Uh, so you, you mentioned that it would be good if during the in-person event we could tickle some particular theme or topic, and I wasn't sure what specifically you were referring to. Um, I think some, you know, I think that there's, when I look at the, well, this version of what Jim just had up on the um, board, I just feel like there's, there are people have concerns about um, resources uh, that aren't necessarily brought to a head in the survey because the people answering the survey probably have medical insurance, health insurance, and a lot of um, opportunity that 
a lot of the citizens of Barnstable don't actually have. And there is concern about that. And I think it's understated in in the results of the survey because I think they're, you know, the results, I keep saying the same thing because of who took the survey, who actually takes the survey. So I I um I think it would be worthwhile. I mean, I, I like the part about they want more record there, there's a need for more recreational opportunity for families and stuff like that. But what are the other services, family services? I mean. I, I'm sorry Carlos isn't here because he will tell us. <laughs> um, he will definitely bring that up, but um, and it might be worth an email to him to ask him. Hope yeah, he helps. was definitely adamant. I think food, food was a big thing on his, his plate. I don't want to make a pun out of that. That's not really the point, but... Um, Social he, services, food. Yeah, I mean, he said something about we need a large food pantry in Hyannis, not in Harwich, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But I would just say basic fundamental human rights that we we assume people have and they don't. But you're right, maybe we could get him to comment. Um, Jennifer? So I, I was just going to follow up with what Avery said and, and a little bit of what you said. I think also the um, food insecurity issue can't be underestimated. And um, I agree with Avery with the uh, potential of who, who responded to the survey so far. And hopefully we will have a chance to get more feedback and more input and more engagement from people who are in person who may not have responded um, to date. But I think uh, jumping off from the, the last meeting, the end of the last meeting, um, those emergency services, emergency resources needed sort of here and now um, to put an emphasis on that. And I think food insecurity is uh, top of the list across the, across the board. Thank you for that. Um, I just want to make a note that uh, Fran has joined uh, the meeting committee member, Fran Parks. So, um, Cheryl, comment? Uh, yes, just to follow up on what was said about Carlos and uh, what Jennifer said and from what Avery said, uh, I, I think what they're referring to is um, the comments that came out at that last entire meeting, uh, I, I won't deny I was surprised when I believe it was Ms. Jenkins who actually commented on how over half of the responses reflected the some of the more human element. But I, I know uh, last night we had a meeting with the Human Services Committee because I wanted to address the food issue. There are a number of uh, food pantries, food council of churches, several other churches. There's a number of entities. There was a three page list of places to which I asked to be given that I've been assured I'll get that list to put into a database. I think part of that problem is, is just getting the information all gathered and put together, which we are working on. So I, th I think the food issue is not as dire as just getting the information out, which the database will do. Um, it's basically a matter of the communication, uh, letting people know how to find it, how to access that information. But I, I was surprised, and I think it was Ms. Jenkins who commented about the reactions from the survey. Uh, I, I, I was surprised about it being more than half. But then I think these, this, this here is also, uh, you know, extremely important. Thank you. Lindsay. Unmute. Yes, um, my, I think we are a little light on some of the responses, particularly in the housing and services area. I, I would have to agree with the comments ahead of me. Um, it just seems that we just have not had feedback sufficient to really direct us to um, pick any types of solution we'd like to see implemented or programs that we could get involved with, that kind of thing. So. Uh, that's my thoughts on that. Those are all my weak points. I, m most of my strong points were covered in the, uh, the questionnaire area, so there. Uh, and the other one was transportation. I, I, I think the old question of transportation and the drastic change that's coming as we start to dig up these roads for 
some of these improvements uh, in in uh, water protection really isn't quite out there yet. Wait till they start digging on Route 28 um, in uh, the Hyannis area heading west. Uh, so I don't know what the correction is to our consultancy. This is being a comparable set of surveys given our point in time in the process and any places for improvement, I guess would be my questions of what we might pull off and then you know say, okay, we've got the environment and some of these recreation things squared away. Let's see what we can do to shore up um, some of these areas before we get to places where, you know, decision-making. Good comments. Thank you for that. Um, any other committee members with comments? I'll just, I'll just say, I think they start, I think they had Route 28 blocked off today. I was at the fish market out on West Main Street and there was a steady stream of cars coming in from from uh, Centerville area toward Hyannis, and you could not take a left on that road if you tried. And there's no school in session this week. It was amazing. Um, okay, Ellen. Um, I was under the impression that the public was invited to this meeting, so. Um, yes, but usually we do public comments at the end of the meeting, but I'll let you speak okay. now because you, you, you seemed concerned. Oh, okay. Um, just a couple of things. Um, maybe someone can answer the, my question as to whether or not the slides from this presentation can some some I could access that outside of a meeting. Uh, we could post these on the website easily. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, would help, it would help uh, me personally to prepare for the workshop. Uh, have that information. That that's one question. Um, Before you continue, can you tell us what village you're from? It's just I'm in fit. Centerville. Centerville, thank you. Yeah. Um, I I did I did complete um, at least two forms of the survey on this, but there's been a lot of mention of demographics of the respondents, and I would like to know visually how that breaks down. One of my concerns is that I, I know we tried all kinds of ways, or you tried all kinds of ways to elicit response, but. Uh, I'd like to know how many people who don't live here were responding to these um, kinds of things. Um, and and another point that uh, I looked at the slides and it said, you know, areas of discussion or whatever. One of the um, areas on the first graph was neighborhoods, which I feel is a very um, overlap kind of category. And it didn't make it onto the bullet point list. So um, people who responded to their concerns for neighborhoods also probably concerned, responded to one of those other things in there about village related identity and so forth like that. So I feel that the word neighborhood needs to be somewhere in there um, so people can respond to that. Thank you for that. You all set? Um, for now? Yeah, I think that'll do it, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for your input. Um, so we're all set with with this status of what was on the slides to us. You want to continue to the review of the vision? It's twenty minutes of three, so we have about forty five minutes left. If we could uh, just real quick from Bear Group, take a peek at the, the findings of existing conditions. Okay. Thank you, Alexis. Hi, I'm Jill Slankis with Barrett Planning Group. I think I might be up first talking about natural systems trends. Okay, um, so we will keep this brief. We have, uh, we, we've worked on a, I don't know, about a 90 some page report describing the existing conditions in town um, that the town staff are reviewing and the, the um, LCPC will get a chance to review real soon. And then obviously the public thereafter. So you'll have lots to dig through. Um, on a lighter note in preparation for next week's workshops, um, we have worked with the town staff to create what we're calling summary sheets or fact sheets for natural systems, built systems, and community systems. 
Um, and those you will have, you already, the committee already has those to review and the town will include those on the website um, by Friday or so, so that the public will have a chance to access those and get a head start on reviewing um, some of the highlights and trends of existing conditions um, prior to the workshops. All right, so I'll, I'll go briefly here um, and happy to take questions after uh, myself, Carly and Alexis are finished presenting. All right, so as part of natural systems, that includes groundwater, marine water, freshwater lakes and ponds. Um, as you know, the town's groundwater um, system is entirely replenished by precipitation, fluctuates seasonally. Uh, Barnstable continues to evaluate options for developing new groundwater well and filtration points to meet current and future needs for drinkable water. Um, as far as marine water, um, the Community Resilience Building Workshop identified low-lying infrastructure, emergency access during weather events, wastewater and utility failures are some of the most concerning challenges related to marine waters um, and climate change. The town's hazard mitigation plan, which was recently updated in 2022, is an important policy document for marine waters and coastal areas and identifies priority projects to help protect the most vulnerable locations like barrier beach areas and coastal dunes. As far as freshwater lakes and ponds, um, they're significant in terms of their scenic, recreational, and wildlife habitat resources. Um, <clears throat> Barnstable has over 160 freshwater ponds, 90 of which are one acre or more. Um, collectively, ponds occupy um, almost 2,000 acres within the town. Um, as you know, freshwater ponds are particularly sensitive to additions of pollutants like phosphorus, which is associated, associated with development and land uses close to a pond, such as wastewater, fertilizer, and stormwater sources. So buffering pond shorelines from development is an effective strategy for protecting freshwater ponds and lakes by taking advantage of the soil's ability to absorb and store phosphorus. <clears throat> right, next slide, please. All right, also included in the natural systems is wetland resources, open space, and habitat. Barnstable is home to over 300 isolated wetlands, many being cranberry bogs. Um, and these wetland buffers provide important habitat as well as assist in the management of pollutants before they can flow into wetlands and clog or impair them. And that's what we all talked about briefly also um, with the ponds. Um, in terms of open space, approximately 28% of the area of the town is open space that's protected in perpetuity. Um, it's an increase of over 500 acres um, from 2010 to 2022. So the town um, clearly um, values open space and continues um, to work in collaboration with other organizations um, to acquire and protect um, open space parcels. Uh, land acquisitions along Route 6 make up the backbone of the town's conservation lands and contribute to regional green infrastructure and Cape Cod pathway goals. Um, and efforts continue, uh, conservation efforts continue to focus on smaller corridors running north-south and linking to the larger conservation greenway um, along the shorelines. <clears throat> Habitat, um, in terms of habitat, the fragmentation um, and loss due to development, um, but also increasingly are newer threats such as climate change, invasive species, and the reduction of natural disturbances such as wildfires um, and storm events. Um, and that's all, we'll go on to the next section, thank you. So this section is about the build systems and hopefully I can get through it pretty quickly so we can get to our discussion. Um, Alexis, next slide, please. So land use is actually at the crux of this local comprehensive planning process and it directly impacts the protection of sensitive areas and environments, as well as the location of resilient development, redevelopment and infrastructure. All the while this directly impacts where people want to live, choose to live and work. So Barnstable is currently facilitating zoning through ordinances, districts, and supplemental regulations, including the following bullets, growth management ordinances, districts of critical planning concern, subdivision rules and regulations. There's quite a few and they'll be in the summary sheets, of course. Next slide, please. So wastewater, drinking water, and stormwater are all part of reassuring water quality across Barnstable, which was highlighted in the survey analysis, starting, be, starting first with wastewater management. It's about protecting water quality because it's vital to the future of Barnstable and the region as a whole. 
So infrastructure to handle and treat household, commercial, and industrial waste can protect embayments and groundwater. Municipal wastewater infrastructure includes a secondary wastewater treatment plant, 30 sewage pump stations, 55 miles of sewer collection lines, and a pretreatment program for industrial wastewater, as well as a laboratory for testing. The CWMP calls to expand the town's sewer collection system by approximately 190 miles over the next 30 years. Looking into drinking water supplies, uh, Barnstable drinking water supplies provided by the Cape Cod Sole Source Aquifer, which is an underground layer of porous soil through which fresh water can flow. It's actually really sandy in nature, so it leaves the Cape Cod Aquifer kind of vulnerable to contamination since there's less time for natural fil filtration of any pollutants. So as you may know already, there uh, are five independently, independently governed districts that uh, cover the provision of water and emergency services across Barnstable. And these districts are actually continuously making strides against concerns for chemical, chemical detection in the water supply, including PFAS and PFOA, concern, concerns regarding uh, the projected drinking water deficit of 2.16 million gallons per day is also uh, being met with a study completed in 2019 by Weston and Sampson. So, Looking at stormwater management, it's also a big piece of the puzzle. It mitigates the runoff of uh, sediment, bacteria, fertilizers, oils, pesticides, you name it, uh, when it comes to maintaining good water quality. Green stormwater infrastructure has made a lot of strides in reducing and treating runoff while also providing shade, habitat, and beautification. Next one, please, Alexis. So the built system also includes transportation network, which was talked about earlier. Barnstable has facilities for many modes for both residents and visitors, including the Cape Cod Regional Transit Authority, the Cape Flyer, park and ride lots, uh, regional bus systems that are private, and the Department of Public Works Highway Division actually maintains 271.19 miles of town roads and provides emergency support for the repairs of 200 miles of private roads, along with many other facets of this system from pedestrian to bike infrastructure. Barnstable's designation as a complete streets community in 2022, in tandem with the completion of an improved prioritization plan in the near future, hopefully, um, the town will be eligible for the funding uh, up to, I think, $400,000 to complete multimodal projects that improve safety and mobility. Utilities and services is a big topic area. It covers quite a few things. So it covers everything from services like the libraries to the public school system to public safety. Some trends in this area include the Barnstable School District taking on a new superintendent, Sarah Ayrn, who is still formulating an entry plan and focusing on building relationships and highlights enhancing performance and statewide test scores as a goal of the district. Um, another aspect includes public safety in the way of fire and police. They're both hire, struggling to hire qualified professionals um, with career experience and the police department in particular has outgrown their physical space in their Hyannis headquarters, and they're actually relying more on village substations. So I think that leads us to community systems. Thank you. Um, so my name is Alexis Lanzalotta, uh, and I'm with Barrett, and I'm uh, going to talk a little bit about the community systems uh, trends that we have dug into. Again, a lot of this information is on those fact sheets that um, the LCPC has, and we'll make sure the public has as well in advance of the um, forums next week. So uh, cultural heritage is such a, a rich part of Barnstable. Um, so we talk a bit in the plan about uh, Barnstable's natural landscapes uh, and built environment and how it reflects the heritage of Barnstable and what makes it unique. So there are many historic buildings, structures, cemeteries, homesteads, uh, and streetscapes in town. And these are all um, uh, community assets that can't be replenished once gone. Uh, and they also tell Barnstable's story and create a very strong sense of place um, so Barnstable has two cultural districts and also two uh, local historic districts, um, and there is a bit of overlap there, um, but for the local historic districts, Old Kings Highway Historic District and then Hyannis Main Street Waterfront Historic District, they both, both have historic district commissions um, overseeing them, and for the rest of the town, uh, any structures that are over 75 years old uh, located outside of those um, if there's any uh, partial or full demolition planned um, that's subject to review by the Barnstable Historical Commission. 
uh, one of the things that I think is just so so neat about Barnstable and its uh, commitment to historic uh, preservation is that um, compared to other towns Capewide, Barnstable has far more um, items on the National Register of Historic Places. Um, it accounts for 40% of the countywide listings um, on the National Register, which I think is, is quite a cool accomplishment. Uh, and then recently, that uh, the Old Kings Highway um, Regional Historic District um, for a stretch through Cape Cod, not just Barnstable, but was recognized as a uh, national scenic byway by the U.S. Department of Transportation in 2021. So, so much richness in the cultural heritage uh, of Barnstable. For, for people uh, who's living in Barnstable, I think this will be a really interesting part in um, phase two to build out and talk about some of those community health concerns. That's kind of where th this it would fit. Um, but essentially, uh, you know, some of the highlights here, Barnstable is a growing community over the last 10 uh, decennial censuses, all but one has seen population growth. Um, and as it grows, it continues to become more racially and ethnically, ethnically diverse. Um, in terms of the age of population, it's interesting because, you know, just like other uh, Cape communities, Massachusetts, and even nationwide, the population is uh, is aging. Uh, however, Barnstable, compared to other Cape towns, actually has uh, a higher percentage of youth under 18 than most Cape towns. So that's kind of an interesting dichotomy there. Um, however, overall, you know, school enrollment has declined significantly over the last 20 years. So um, uh, another thing that we uh, wanted to... Um, point out is that uh, uh, Barnstable has 12 census blocks that are designated as environmental justice populations. And um, so it's 12 out of the 38 census blocks in town. And they're all located in Hyannis, um, uh, primarily based on the uh, minority population um, criteria, but also um, based on income and level of English proficiency. Um, and again, that's all concentrated in Hyannis. In the plan, we talk a bit about what the environmental justice designations mean, um, but in terms of getting that designation, it's based on uh, those demographic factors. So housing and, and economy, they're really heavily linked, so we wanted to keep them together here. Uh, like other Cape Cod communities, um, the housing environment is largely defined by the seasonal economy. Um, and also the natural resources that kind of limit where development can even happen. So the local and regional uh, housing environment is really intrinsically linked to the health of the local economy. Um, you know, just some, some key facts. Most of Barnesville households uh, own about uh, uh, 75%, but in Hyannis, it's actually the majority who, who rent. Um, there's uh, at least a third of Barnstable homes are actually second homes, um, and at least 5% are short-term rentals. So one interesting thing that the housing production plan pointed out is kind of the mismatch of um, uh, the amount of household uh, houses in Barnstable that have three or more bedrooms, but most households are only one or two people. So there's a bit of a mismatch, mismatch between the, the built homes and the uh, households living in them. Um, in terms of the economy, uh, Barnstable is the largest town on Cape Cod, often referred to as the downtown or heart of, of Cape Cod, and it features a strong and diverse uh, economy year-round as well as during uh, peak season. So when you're looking at the jobs of people who live in Barnstable and the jobs of people who work in Barnstable, uh, retail trade, construction, and healthcare and social assistance are among the top industries. Um, and, you know, a couple interesting things that jumped out at us, um, uh, over half of those who work in Barnstable also live in town, and that is uh, uh, pretty unique to Barnstable. It's a higher than the county at 43% of workers who live in the town uh, where they work. Um, and then also Barnstable has a pretty high uh, percentage of self-employed residents at 15%. That's also significantly higher than um, the state um, and New England rate. So some interesting tidbits about the economy, but that seasonal nature of the economy and the housing challenges that Barnstable faces really are, are intrinsically linked. So that's it for the existing conditions. Um, and again, it's very high level, uh, but uh, with that, I think we'll ask if there's any questions before we move on to community vision. Okay, I'll ask from the committee. I, I had a question actually. Um, it was mentioned that out of 500 acres of open space, or, or that there has been an increase in 500 acres of open space over the, the time period since the last plan was done. And uh, do you have that by village? That would be, be of interest at some point in time to uh, to to note where those increases uh, took place because I, I am very well aware that um, the current uh, local comprehensive plan 
um, actually had some very direct language in it about uh, where open space was needed. And you just said that that unfortunately all the EJ districts are in Hyannis and they were in our current plan made a, a rather large attempt, I thought, through language as to the fact that this should be addressed, you know, and that and that they wanted to see more, it wanted to see more uh, open space in Hyannis. So I was just curious if if you could connect those two things and it, it would be interesting to, to be consistent uh, with that. Um, other questions, Wendy. I'm coming, thank you. Um, that was really well done, a very succinct and really interesting comments um, that didn't appear on the bullets. But two, two quick things, I would be interested to know, you don't have to answer me now, but I would be interested to know if there are any additional low to moderate income districts in the community. Um, I know that that helps with CRA investments by banks and loans and that kind of thing. But the other comment I had for thought was that there's there's no NAICS code for tourism. So I see that those jobs in the retail sector ranked pretty high. I and mean, technically, a lot of that is driven by our what you all call a seasonal economy. Um, I call it our tourism industry. And the tourism industry is really comprised of retail, restaurants, lodging, attractions, cultural institutions. So um, I don't know if we can make some reference to there when you when you combine all of those makes codes together. That's a better better viewpoint of our tourism industry. You could tell she was the former CEO of the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce. I'm just just throwing a plug in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, same lens. Nothing wrong with that. That's good. Um, that's, that's helpful. We can we can kind of look at grouping those things together accordingly. Other comments, Wendy, or are you all set? I'm good. Okay. I also wanted to say that the libraries aren't owned by the town, but they are subsidized by the town. You guys, I assume, know that, right? Because you listed facilities, you listed libraries under there, but they're they're not town owned. Just so you know that. I don't know whether someday that'll change, but it's not like that today. Um, anybody else on the committee have any comments? No. Nope. No. Nope. Avery. I just wanted to say, I, I have found this breakdown of the three SIFs systems very helpful and in, in my coming to better understanding about what we're doing. Um, and so thank you for that. Um, I am going to be a little bit of a broken record today, especially when we get to the vision statement. But the one thing that really hit, struck me on Alexis's presentation as you start it with the cultural history and all of that, instead of with the people. Um, the people, I just think the people are first, you know, in there. I mean, I love the cultural history and believe me in so many ways, but, but I, in terms of the work we're trying to do, I just, I don't want, I don't want it to get lost in that and other stuff. Not that, and then, and then, just to be clear, I'm not in any way putting down the other part because I think it's integral, but um, that, that's my comment. Thank you. Fran, you have any comments or Jen? Lindsay said you're all set. Okay. Um, yeah, um, I have one more comment about the uh, seasonal versus year-round uh, economy, um, particularly um, in Hyannis, where most of our economic development takes place. Um, recently, we went through a major zoning change in downtown Hyannis, which I know you are all very well aware of. Um, what concerns me, and you, and you gave uh, great numbers about second homes, uh, the percent, like a third, um, and 5% short-term rentals, I think you talked about. Um, uh, th those are big numbers that take houses off the market for local people, obviously, at, at all kinds of levels of support. You know, all those, all those 1950s two-bedroom ranches are now, you know, not necessarily have 
year-round people living in them anymore, which is too bad. Um, I'd love to know if there's a way in this plan that we could talk about new housing development throughout the town, if, if there's can be an emphasis on primary residences. And so that regardless of, you know, when we're, um, I don't even know if this is legal or not, I'm just asking the question. I'm sure there's other um, communities that have done this before. But so yes, of course we want them affordable and they could be anywhere from 30% of AMI up to 120% and they could have X percent of, you know, if you had somebody building 60 units, you know, if 50, percent of them were for levels of AMI and then um, but if 80 percent of those units in the whole building if there were 60 so 48 units were for primary residences um, I think we could go a long way to balance out our Main Street area particularly because we want it to be vibrant but we want it to thrive year-round we don't need more people here just in the summer I mean that's not I don't think what anybody's looking for for the town of Barnstable. We want our economy to to be vibrant year round, um, and the way you do that is through um, people who live here year round and not just in the high season. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any expertise in that. I know a housing production plan was just done, and I'm always late in talking about things when everybody else said, "Where were you then?" But um, it just occurred to me that it's a real problem that if we don't stipulate the emphasis of what we're looking for, and if, if and I, I am very, uh, I, I'm a big believer in the town being proactive in specifying, we want this kind of housing here, and this is who we want it to serve. And I just think that the plan should probably state that. And for people who choose to build what, the town asked for, then we'll, you know, give them incentives or something, lots of subsidies, you know, we need to back it up. Anyway, that's my speech on that. Lindsay, you have your hand up. Thank you. Thank you, Felicia. I should be able to put something together for community preservation for um, you all review on what we've expended our funds on over the last period of time by village. We haven't done that in a couple of years and it's a good reminder. We could pull that together and you all could see where those funds have been going. Great. You sat there? Yep, thanks. Okay. Anybody else, staff or anybody else have any questions, comments? I guess uh, next on our agenda here is um, our um, review the vision from 2010. discuss the vision. Can you go to the next slide, Alexis? All right, so um, purpose of this workshop that we're gonna be doing is about coming up with a vision for Barnstable. So it's to gather input that we'll take back and synthesize, um, put together a vision for the local comprehensive plan. So what is a vision? A vision is um, a mental picture of what residential want their community to look like and feel like in the future. It's usually 10 or 20 years, depending on how often you update your comprehensive plan. Um, so try to imagine what you want Barnstable to be or what it could be at its very best. Um, and then that aspiration is the thing that should drive your comprehensive plan's goals and actions. It's what you're aiming towards. It's the target. Um, because you are on the Cape um, and you are part of you know, the Cape Cod Commission's area, um, there's a little bit more detail that the that the vision has to um, satisfy than a general master plan in Massachusetts. So the vision statement has to express the shared values of the community for future growth and development and resource protection and represent the growth policy for the community. So at a minimum, it needs to do that, um, but it can also go beyond that. Um, so we're interested, you know, specifically in shared values, growth, development, resource protection. Um, but we're also interested in other aspects of the community and what your picture is for the future of Barnstable. Next slide. Um, so here are just a couple examples of vision statements. I picked these because they're from award-winning plans, not because they're from communities that are similar to Barnstable. Um, as you can see, there's probably a bias towards giving big communities 
um, awards for their plans. So Cambridge is a forward-thinking, welcoming, and diverse city. We enjoy a high quality of life and thrive in a sustainable, inclusive, and connected community. Um, and this vision statement also includes about two pages of core values. Um, so it's not just this one sentence thing, it's also a list of, of core values in a number of different categories um, and really getting to why Cambridge would want to do things, um, why different planning improvements would benefit people or the environment or uh, other cultural values. Uh, another one, in 2040, Greensboro will be Greensboro will be the best mid-sized city in America, the greenest <laughs> city in the Southeast, equitable, diverse, and inclusive, making history, and a city of inspiration. Um, so there are sub bullets within that, and this one also has five values that are associated with it. But um, you can see it's a little different in Cambridge in that it's like they're really putting out there that they're going to be the best, right? They have some clear goals and. Uh, I don't know how you're going to measure being the best, best mid-sized city in America, but um, they're going to try to achieve that. Next slide. Um, this is the 2010 vision from your local comprehensive plan. Um, so there are basically three different elements that were included in the vision section. There's the vision proper, the thing on the upper left that has the title of vision. Um, then there's this thing that's called the plan concept, uh, which talks a lot about sustainability, the challenges of balancing human interactions with the fragile peninsula of the Cape, living within a smaller environmental footprint. And so it sort of expands upon the vision and makes it a little bit more nuanced and really sets that sustainability um, target. And then there are the comprehensive plan goals. Um, for the purposes of our work in this workshop, we're not trying to get to the comprehensive plan goals. Those are going to arise later uh, in the process. But it is important to think about the types of elements that you might want those goals to uh, aim towards. And, and then we can reflect those in the vision as well. So the goals here are things like sustaining diverse villages and livable neighborhoods for year-round residents while providing housing opportunities for all, um, or preserving and enhancing historic and maritime character, public view sheds and cultural landscapes. Next slide. All right, so this is the vision. So the vision is from 2010 was the seven diverse yet interconnected villages of Barnstable form one community that is an integral part of Cape Cod. As the town in 2010 has been shaped by its past through this plan, Barnstable will shape a sustainable future. The town will preserve its history, environment, and community for future generations through active stewardship of community character and quality of life while balancing growth, infrastructure, and natural systems. Okay, so we're going to, in the workshop, we're gonna break out into groups at about this point. And so people will be in, in breakout groups, they're first going to talk about the public engagement um, summary. And we're going to have some questions about that, which are mostly focused on trying to make sure that the summary was accurate. And then of the themes that are in it, you know, if there are things that are missing, we want to make sure those get down, then which things are priorities, and then what are the values underneath that. After that, we will talk about this vision. We're going to put it up. The facilitators are going to read it. And then they're going to ask some questions. So Alexis, can you click? So the first question is, does the 2010 vision sound generally right? Does it, does it inspire you? Um, <laughs> and there are about five questions here. So let's, we can go through them one at a time. Alexis, why don't you just click, click through them all right now, and then that'll give the committee an opportunity to talk about them. The second question is, what has changed since 2010 that the vision should address? The third is, does anything need to be added or taken away? Um, what challenges, what challenging decisions might the community face in the future? And what should the vision say to provide guidance on future decisions? All right, so you guys get 20 minutes to talk about this vision um, before 3.30. I don't see any hands inspired. Cheryl. Uh, how do you want to do the breakout rooms? Is somebody going to decide where to group us or are, are there we one big breakout room? 
Yeah, so during the, we're not going to do breakout groups today. Um, during the workshop, the participants will be randomly divided into breakout groups. Um, and our goal is to have somewhere between eight and 15 people per breakout group, depending on how many participants we have. Um, so we and they're all going to work on the same thing, right? Yep. Each facilitator okay. will run through the same questions and the same process um, and take notes as they go. Uh, Wendy? Yeah, I guess I'm thinking the 2010 vision statement really mm -hmm. does look like a committee wrote it, you know? <laughs> um, not that it's bad, but um, so I get a little worried when I think about the hundreds that will be involved in this exercise. Not that that's bad, but I'm not clear about the process of distilling a vision statement. I mean, I think there's keywords missing in this, like thrive and diverse. And I'm channeling Carlos and Avery by saying we sh we need to lead with the people reference. But um, how how's this is this really going to work? We'll see. Yeah. So, I mean, we're not trying to get to a vision statement at the end of this workshop. We're trying oh, to get to that. Okay. We're trying to get to a sense of where people wanted to go, what they think is important, okay. what the themes are. Um, you know, so is diversity important to you? Uh, it, you know, clearly you have seven diverse villages. That's probably not going to change. Um, but is diversity and equity and inclusion important? It's not in here, I don't think. Right. Um, so we're trying to get to the key themes and the key values that are underneath there so that we have enough to work with that we can go back to the office and, and write something up. Um, okay, that's much clearer, thanks. I do, think, I do think that people will want to see reflected back to them what they said to us and there's gonna be a lot of input, hopefully, if we do our job right. Um, so I just hate to disappoint people by saying, well, where's my word, you know? Okay. Um, Lindsay. Yes. Um, get my right buttons here. Um, for me, it's really a question of, in particular in the bottom of the 2010 vision paragraph, it says, um, the uh, active stewardship of community character and quality of life while balancing growth, infrastructure, and natural systems. Well, we're spending a huge amount of money to bring our uh, water treatment infrastructure up to date. Uh, and that's gonna take quite some time. In terms of balancing growth, I guess the question I have is what types of growth and where? I mean, single family homes, I think we have sufficient number of those, but uh, we haven't, embarked on the adventure and that's probably being done through the housing study of what types of uh, growth we're going to see in, in community housing. And as we've seen so many times, the natural systems are completely overloaded. So they're, uh, I don't know about active stewardship, we need to start improving that. So we have some real imbalances that need to be addressed <clears throat> and when we're going to start uh, uh, making decision on, you know, have we reached capacity? Look at the road system, for example. Um, we just, there's no place to build new roads to relieve capacity off of others. So what improvements can be made to suit not necessarily the future, even what we have now? So these are difficult questions and where we're going to address them and how is, um, it'll be interesting to see uh, going forward what our decision points will be and how we're going to arrive at them. So thanks. Thank you. Avery? Uh, first of all, Felicia, what you were just saying earlier about housing, I kept putting up little emojis of thumbs up and clap, clap, because I, I, th I think what you were talking about is really, really important to the future of housing on Cape Cod and Barnstable. Um, as for our the vision, um, I, I like the slides <laughs> of the other town's visions. Um, I felt like they gave us something to kind of push off from because they were they were they were inspirational, whereas this one ours is far from that. Um, and I don't I don't know how that those slides might be incorporated without you know, as they say, leading the witness too much. But 
as I say, they were inspirational. They made me feel like, oh, I would, I would like to write the Barnstable version of those slides, especially the the greatest city in the Midwest or whatever it called itself. Oh, Greensboro. <laughs> Greensboro. So. In the Midwest. Where is it? South Carolina. Yeah. See, I live on, never mind. I went over the bridge once. <laughs> <laughs> She's lying, but that's okay. She's cute. I'm just kidding. Um, Fran, any any input? Yeah, I have um, active stewardship of community character seems um, uh, that we're directing or or you know um, you know uh, making sure that the community has the, the proper character. And I, you know, I don't. I'm not a fan of. Uh, uh, diversity, inclusion, and equity, because I think that is a, is the same thing of, of uh, um, managing uh, what is what people with what ideas are in the community. So I don't think that's, you know, I think the <clears throat> community has just managed itself quite nicely <clears throat> through the years for the most part, with some exceptions. Um, it always seemed diverse to me when I was growing up. And so I'm not sure that um, that it's the job of a town to manage what the community is going to look like. <clears throat> That's it. Thank you. Uh, Cheryl? Uh, yes, when addressing this, I, I listening to Avery and uh, Wendy and the others on their comments, um, I think it, 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 uh, for instance, Fran saying it's not for the town to address it, but I think that's why they put together this group to try to have a look at it and see what we can come up with. But also on this particular page that's up on the 2010 vision, I agree, and I think it was Avery who was saying, maybe it was Wendy, I apologize, whichever one was saying how the other towns had, had uh, things that seemed very pertinent. I would possibly, addressing what was said before, um, balancing growth but also natural systems and both hum balancing and addressing both human and material infrastructures i think would put the human element into it but that's simply my opinion i think infrastructures are because uh town to survive but we have to also uh not ignore the 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 human element, and I'm not sure I'm, uh, where that fits in, but I, I know a number of people have mentioned it. So I think there's there's material and infrastructure is essential, but I think it can be um, with the growth. The growth is also with human beings as well. And we have okay. a, we have a Thank huge influx of, of population. Is it already what 18 point eight percent of the elderly in that? So uh, over over the age of sixty five, I think was stated. So anyway, it's just trying to put it all together. Thank you. Sure. Um, I just like to see. Um, yeah, to me, the vision's very flat. I even thought so when I was on the committee that did this. Um, but the the slide before this, where you show some more of the meat and potatoes, where they they talk about other you know, more of that. I don't even think that this reflects all of that. So you might have to switch back and forth with all the groups or put that up to see what should be changed, what should be done, because this is so generic. Um, and it really is kind of uninspiring in 2023, no doubt about it. Um, but you can't really pick it apart as being awful because it really doesn't say anything bad. <laughs> it just doesn't cover everything you'd like it to do. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's the real challenge with a vision statement for a comprehensive yeah. plan is it, it needs to be a consensus statement for the whole community. Yeah. Um, and so it, it it's difficult to achieve that and have it be inspiring to any one particular constituency. Right. Because right? it's... Well, it also, it also has to um, satisfy the Cape Cod Commission rules. So, um, 
that's why it says, you know, one part of the community is an integral part of Cape Cod. You know, God forbid you just talk about yourself as a town. You have to talk about the entire county, the Cape. Right. Uh, so what, what would make this more inspiring to you all? Well, so the question, uh, Avery, you like Greensboro. You want to tell us why? Well, a, a couple of things. What I want to say before I answer that question is that, you know, I was thinking about this vision statement and I found myself thinking about a mission statement, which is slightly different. And, and, and I think that that's something in some ways just to parse out in one's brain, or at least that's what I'm doing. Cause I'm used to writing mission statements. I'm not used to writing vision statements. Um, I just thought, I felt like the the Greensboro one was, it was almost like an advertisement. It felt like it was written by a marketer. But in a way, I think this part of the um, LCP, that's sort of the point, is to like engage an audience that might actually want to, you know, go through it and and learn more about it. And I liked about the... Um, both the Cambridge one and the Greensboro one, although the Greensboro one was really the most inspiring, I like that they 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 had further explanation. This one, I think, part of what happened in the 2010 statement is the group tried to say everything in one paragraph, which is impossible. Whereas the bulleted ones of Greensboro, or even the Cambridge one that had the paragraph, which I didn't like as much as Greensboro, at least they have, you know, whatever it said, two pages of explanation underneath it. I think the it was core value. Was yeah. Well um, branded or whatever you want to say. Wendy, did you want to comment? Yeah, no, I, I agree with Avery. I think, I mean, I just went and grabbed the museum's own mission statement, which is nice, but our vision statement is better and vision statements are hard. I think what we have currently is way too long and I don't think you have to cover every blessed component of your plan, but you just wanna inspire people to action. So, you know, for the JFK Museum, our vision is to inspire next generation leadership in public service, increase citizen engagement, encourage respectful nonpartisan dialogue. That's our vision. It doesn't say how we're going to do it, but it says our vision. So I think if we could paint something that, like the words I've heard today, thriving, diverse, sustainable, you know, people that are, we're living in an, a beautiful environment that we want to keep that way. We want to honor our history. There's a lot that we want to do, but I think boiling it down is the, is the hardest part. I don't think, that's why I asked the process question earlier, um, because it is a process. We can sit here and talk about it for 20 minutes, but it's not gonna get us the vision statement until we have our bringing it together meetings and we get more input. And then we really listen closely to what our community is saying and then try to, to shape something that's succinct. Yeah. And for, for us, the, the value of having this conversation with you all now is to get a sense of it's a preview for us of what we might hear in the meetings so we can be better prepared to um, yeah. move the direction into a productive direction. Uh, Dylan, if you, if you, I just wanted to add my two cents that we might want to ask a question about what um, people think our core values as a community are or should be, um, because that really gives you a really good basis or foundation for coming up with um, easy drafts and words um, so that that stuff that Avery uh, was talking about saying, you know, you have bullet points that you, this one relates to that, this one relates to this, so you kind of know exactly what you stand for. I mean, that's all based on the core value part. And I didn't see anything about that. So we might, you might want to either add a question or a different slide about or an exercise. I don't know. I'm not telling you how to do your business because it's not my job. But um, I just think that that's an easy thing for people of any economic strata and any ethnicity to answer what you think the community's or the town's core values are. So yeah. wherever, wherever their brain goes, it goes. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's what we're hoping to get out of the first part of the discussion, which we aren't doing 
today, which is about okay. the summary of the previous public input and trying to get from that to core values. Um, so when people talk about improving recreation, why do they care about that? What's the community value that's behind um, improving recreation or what's the community value that's behind wanting to improve social services for people at greatest need? Okay, yeah. Avery, do you still have your hand up? I do, real quickly, I just wanted to say, hopefully we'll be collecting some more words, right, uh, Jen? Okay, we have like uh, three minutes or three minutes left. So, uh, Cheryl? Uh, yes, just just very quickly, I, I like that idea very much of identifying what the core values are. But I would also extend that to what we want the core values, not only what are they now, but what, what do we want them to be? Correct. What do we want to reflect? And I apologize, I do have to leave in three minutes because yeah. I have- No, we're, we're gonna try to be done by then. So um, anything else that um, you need from the committee at this point? If not, I'm gonna call for any, I don't see any other public comment on here, but is there anybody wants to make any public comment right now? When do you have your hand up? Yeah, it takes me a while to find the right button. Sorry. You know, I just, I like the way that Greensboro laid out their statement. I mean, I think as a format, and I'm hearing a lot of comment from the committee to that. So not necessarily what they said, but how they laid that out. Yeah. Okay. Good input. <laughs> All right. Um, everybody done with their comments, observations? Yes. And there's no public comment uh, that I can see. So are there any other matters not reasonably anticipated or on the agenda from the committee at this time? No? No. Nope. I'm not giving you too long to think. So um, I'm gonna ask for a motion to adjourn. And so just identify yourself when you make a motion and whoever seconds the motion, identify yourself also. And I'm gonna have to do roll call. Michelle Powell, I will make a motion for adjournment. Second. Second. Second from Fran. All righty. So um, I vote yes. Lindsay? I vote yes. Uh, Wendy? Yes. Francis? Yes. Cheryl? Yes. Avery? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. And I want to thank the committee members who came uh, it's 3.29. We actually made our deadline. I'm shocked. Excellent <laughs> job. Thanks, Felicia. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you all.